Hi, I'm Paul the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over a basic layout formula for sign design. The formula isn't my own. I've got it from, from this book here, which is a really good book on kind of layout, typography, all the fundamentals of sign design, really. But what I'm going to be focusing on is this page here in chapter one, which is a kind of layout formula. So I'm going to go through how I've applied this to some of my works. And then I'm going to share some Photoshop actions that I've written and how to use them to automatically generate this layout on any orientation of file that you're going to use. You don't have to do the design in Photoshop. You could just use this as a tool to generate the layout formula for uh, the measurements of a design that you're working on. So I'm going to jump across into Photoshop now and get started. So before I move on to displaying the action and showing how it works, I'm just going to show you a couple of my early designs that I used this formula for. So this is just a basic landscape layout and this was the design that I'd done. This was the first design I ever did based using this formula and I think it's come out really nicely. Moving on, it doesn't matter what the aspect ratio is, you know, how tall or how wide these actions are going to work and the formula is going to work as well. So again, this is quite an early design of mine that I ended up making into a glass sign using all the kind of space and going right up to the edges. But in some cases, you don't have to use it all, you know, so the text at the top here looks nicer having a little kind of ornament on the edges just to show that the space is there to use, but you don't have to use it all. And just moving on to a few more examples of, of when I'd use this formula. Um, again, these are all quite old designs, so I think I've come a long way in, in the graphic design department since then, but I would still use this formula quite often because it, it's just served me so well. So I'm going to do this tutorial as if I'm teaching Photoshop to someone who's never used it before. So what I've got is the interface of Photoshop open with no tools visible at all. Now it doesn't matter if you've got a lot of tools visible, but the couple that you are going to need will be the layers and the actions. So firstly go up to window actions and then I'll go to window and layers. So the first thing you'll need to do is download the action set that I've included in the link of, in the description of the video. I've already done that, so now I'm going to load those into my actions here. So I'll go to load actions, and here are my the Happy Gilder layout actions. So there's three in here. So I'll start with the one for square, and we'll just go to create a new file. And here you've got your file options. In this case, I'm just going to go for a basic 20 by 20 inch canvas and then run the action on it. So all you need to do is create the file, select the action and then click the play button at the bottom. And this is a layout as described in the book. It's all based on percentages, but that doesn't matter what you've got your rulers set to. Depending on how you want to use this, this could be used for the starting point of creating a digital file or it might be that you've got a signboard that you need to get this layout onto and you just want to kind of get the, get the basic measurement. So let's say for example you're working in centimetres, go to edit, preferences, units and rulers and I'm going to change inches to centimetres, go OK and then I can create this again with centimetres, run the action on a square, it will give the exact same layout but what you'll see here will be the measurements of where each of these individual guides has been placed. So creating the square layout is very straightforward, it's just a click of a button but when it comes to something with a varying aspect ratio there are going to be stops along the way that prompt you to kind of take an action. So I'll show you what I mean by that, so the first thing I'll do is create a new file. So I go to File, New, and I'm just going to go with a standard 16 by 20 canvas, and that's landscape, so that would mean running the landscape action. So I'd click on the action, press play, and then it will get to a point where it needs some intervention. So here this instruction is saying to press Ctrl and T and rotate layer 1 90 degrees. So layer 1 is this black bar at the top, and you can see it on the right hand side here. Now there's instruction of how you can do this if you've never used Photoshop before. The simplest way would just be this by entering it into the value into the top menu bar. Once any of these prompts are done, it'll say press play to resume the action, which will just be click and play in this button here. So I'm going to press stop, Ctrl and T, which is transform, rotate 90 degrees, and press OK. 
So then I'll press play because that resumes the action. And the next prompt is saying drag the rotated shape to the far left until it snaps to the side. Then press play to resume the action. So I'll drag this and that's just snapped to the side. Press play. And now it's just asking to repeat that process but on the right hand side. Now once this is done, it's press play and then the whole thing will be done. So it's a minor inconvenience. So unfortunately I just couldn't find a way around it. So I'll press stop. Rotate this 90 degrees, press enter, and then I'll drag this to the far right hand side until it snaps into place. Then press play, and that's the layout. And if you want, you can turn this on and off if that's distracting, but it's just a kind of good guide of, of where the boundaries are of the kind of recommended parameters. You can also lower the opacity of this if you wanted it just grayed out a little bit. But it's pretty much exactly the same on the portrait action. So I'm just going to switch this around to portrait and then I'm just going to run this I won't stop and explain the steps because I've just done that but I can just show you how quick this is rotate 90 degrees and the only difference here is it's going at the top and bottom instead of at the sides so play Ooh. This is slightly different because the margin at the bottom is a little bit different to the one at the top. So you'll see that that this that layer two has been scaled to the second guide. So it is a, there is a slight difference in how the the landscape and the portrait formula work, but the actual actions you take along the way are pretty much the same. So once those two are done, press play to finish it, and that's it done. And that's it. Really simple. Click of a button. A few manual processes. But I'm going to try and figure those out. So hopefully in the coming weeks or maybe months, I'll have figured out a way to make both the landscape and the portrait actions a single click. And it's a real time saver, especially when it compares to sort of figuring out these percentages every time you've got a new file. And that's it. It's worth saying that I wrote those actions on a PC, so I don't know if they'll work on an Apple Mac. If anyone uses them on an Apple Mac or tries to and they don't work, if you could let me know in the comments and then I'll see if I can get them made up um, so that they're Mac compatible as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think will enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.